As first and third person shooters have become more and more cinematic over the years, racing games have been left behind. Sure, your sim racers like GT Sport and Project Cars don't really need more drama than what you get out on track, but for arcade racers that delve into the underworld or counterculture of racing, there's definitely the opportunity to add a bit of story to go around the gameplay. It's something that Need for Speed has tried a few times over the years to varying degrees of success, but Need for Speed Payback is easily the series' most cinematic attempt yet. There's more than a few shades of the Fast and the Furious to it, maybe a little bit of the Need for Speed film as well, and there's audacious heists that cover all aspects of the job. Tyler Morgan is the racer who the game tells you on a number of occasions is the best racer in town, Jess is the bruising wheelman who will batter cops on the gang's tail and just distract them and lead them away, while Mac is there for the more audacious side of things as the showman, putting the ramp in place for Morgan to jump over, taking you off-road, and so on. Compared to the 2015 game, everything is rendered in-engine, meaning that there's no strange real-world to game transitions. As impressive as they were at the time, there's still something that's a little bit odd about that game. These blockbuster moments jump from character to character, dragging you along a whirlwind of racing, chases and action, and in that regard they're great, but there's a feeling that they may be a little bit too directed when, for example, the cops are on your tail and you need to make an escape. In fact, all cop chases in Payback have got a clear point of escape that you have to reach, as opposed to the kinds of endlessly escalating chases that appeared in previous games and other open world titles. That first audacious job that the gang try and take on goes completely wrong, and they don't make it out with the ultra-rare prototype that they were expecting to. Instead, they end up fractured and divided, with Tyler stuck running errands for the guy that he tried to screw over in order to pay him off and with a new common enemy in sight. He really wants to get revenge against the house, and so he starts running street races in his beat-up rust bucket of a classic sports car. Even though he complains about not having money to pay the rent, this car still has nitrous, and you know, it is a classic that would pick up a few quid on the market. It's not too long before you're getting the gang back together though, and there's some great knowing cliches and, I'm hoping, entirely intentional cheesy dialogue in the game. Going up against the house, which runs all of the street races in the city and is starting to rig them to their own ends, you've got Weir, who is the gambler. Tyler is his ace in the hole, and the words, the house always wins, are uttered quite soon after the start of the game. My personal favourite example is when Mac is talking about growing up in Hackney, boosting cars and learning to drift so that he can drive fast. Where'd you learn to drive like that anyway? London. I ran with a crew from Hackney that boosted cars when I was young and stupid. I learned to drift corners for speed and got damn good at it. That's straight up OG, fam. Please don't say that. These scripted blockbuster missions bring the spectacle, but underneath it all there is still an open world racer, much like the last few entries in Need for Speed. These three characters lead to a trio of racing archetypes and different kinds of cars, and Mac in particular brings something brand new to the game. In addition to his excellence at drifting, you've got his love of off-road racing. To make that happen, Ghost Games have had to bring the physics engine entirely in-house, and there's a good shift between racing on tarmac, racing on dirt tracks, and heading into the bushy scrubland. Not all cars can handle it, and so you could find some rather tasty matchups where your four-wheel drive rally car is able to make those dirt road shortcuts while your opponent has to stick to the road in order to get the best time out of their car. Alongside the arcade handling, which has a certain kind of weight and heft to it, the game still has a great sense of speed, with its mixture of motion blur and effects work, as well as the dynamically shifting camera behind the car. It really emphasises the corners that you drift through as the car swings out to the side of the camera. The only thing you'll struggle for at the start of the game is nitrous. There's the same kind of time and reward based recharge for nitrous, but you simply don't have a lot of it for your first few cars. Upgrading your cars is a key part of the game, and you do so with speed cards, which you earn at the end of successful races and events, picking one of three randomised possibilities. These unlock car parts, which you can then use to boost the car's speed, acceleration, air time, and so on. Initially, you'll probably just slap whatever you want on there, but eventually you'll be picking and choosing particular parts to twist that car in a particular direction with its performance and handling. It feels a bit strange in some ways, but the very best cars in the game will actually be the wrecks that you find in the world, and then work to restore bit by bit. 
The simple reasoning behind that is that not only can they be boosted with these speed card rewards, but they can be taken even further than other cars. For example, the Golf GTI or the Subaru Impreza that you might pick for your first cars, there's just not a huge amount of range to them. Yes, they can be upgraded a great deal, but they won't be competing with the top-end cars that you have later in the game. Taking those derelicts and just building them up piece by piece, they could potentially reach that end game goal. And there's also the flexibility to customize them for different racing disciplines if you so wish. Need for Speed Payback brings something to the table that we really don't get very often anymore. It's just good, honest arcade racing. We've seen its bombastic blockbusting action at E3 and Gamescom, but it comes alongside the kinds of open world racing that the series has built itself around in the last decade, and it even ventures into new territory with the off-road racing. So yes, it might still be Need for Speed, but it might also still be able to surprise you. Thanks for checking out our video of the game, Need for Speed Payback is out on the 10th of November, but you can actually start playing it tomorrow if you're an EA Access or Origin Access subscriber. If you have enjoyed this video, please do like, subscribe and share it with others, and you can check the rest of our videos out here on YouTube, or come visit us over on thesixthaxis.com for tons more gaming news, reviews, previews and so on. Hopefully we will see you soon. Goodbye!